Hi, I'm Travis, an application engineer at Maxim Integrated, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with the Max Ref Does 100 Health Sensor Platform, or HSP for short. The HSP packs all the sensors you would typically need for a wearable health device onto a tiny circuit board, along with a microcontroller, Bluetooth Low Energy, and a USB Type-C connector. It measures heart rate and oxygen saturation with the Max 30101, ECG and heart rate with the Max 30003, and human body temperature with two MAX 30205s, one on each side of the board. It also includes a three-axis accelerometer, an inertial measurement unit, and a barometric pressure sensor. These sensors are all controlled by a MAX 32620 ultra-low power microcontroller, which communicates via USB Type-C or Bluetooth Low Energy with your PC or smartphone. The onboard MAX 14720 power management IC handles the power supplies and lets you use the board untethered with a coin cell battery and the included battery holder. Now let's get started with the Windows GUI. It's really easy and takes less than a minute. First, go to the HSP product page and download the PC GUI program from the Design Resources tab. When the download finishes, open the zip folder and run the executable file named HSensor Setup. Click through the install wizard and click Finish when it's done. Next, plug the HSP into your PC using the provided USB Type-C cable. Press the button until the red LED starts to blink. Windows should automatically install the proper drivers and notify you when the setup is complete. Remember the COM port number, which you can also find in the ports branch of the device manager under the name USB Serial Device. Now we're ready to open the GUI. Click Scan Ports and make sure the COM port of the HSP is selected here and click Connect. Across the top are tabs for each of the functions, which you can also access by clicking the teal links on the home page. First, let's look at the optical sensor. On the left are current settings for each of the LEDs, which we'll leave at default for now. Click Start Monitor and place a finger on the sensor on the bottom of the board. Once the plots scale, you should see the traces rising and falling with each heartbeat. On the bottom left, you'll see the heart rate and SpO2 measured by the detection algorithm. SpO2 takes a bit longer to measure, so give it a minute. Next, let's look at the temperature plot. This page shows the most recent temperature of the top and bottom of the board and updates every 10 seconds by default. Click the Read All Registers button to see the current temperature. Hold the board in your hand or breathe on it, and the temperature should rise by a few degrees. Last are the ECG tabs, but first we'll need to solder on the ECG leads to take measurements. Here's where we'll have to get a little bit creative. If you want a permanent connection, you can strip the leads and solder them directly onto the board, or you can find a way to make a temporary connection, such as with a male header pin. The colors ultimately don't matter, so choose a color scheme that makes sense to you. I connected red to ECG positive, black to ECG negative, and white to VCM which is marked on the bottom of the board. You will also need some electrodes, and wet electrodes work the best, like these 3M red dot electrodes here. For wrist measurements, connect ECG positive to your left wrist, common to a little bit further up, and VCG negative to your right wrist. For chest measurements, connect them according to this diagram of my body. For example, measure lead two by connecting common to the RL position ECG positive to the LL position, and ECG negative to the RA position. Now that we're connected, let's look at our ECG. Click on the ECG MUX tab, and make sure that both of the switches are connected. Also make sure that the calibration test voltage is disabled. On the bottom of the page, check the ECG and R to R boxes, and then head over to the PLOTS tab. Click Start Monitor, and you should see your ECG in real time. The red circles indicate that the R to R detection is working. And on the bottom, you'll see your beats per minute and the average heart rate. Now that you're familiar with the HSP and the Windows GUI, you're ready to put it to good use in your own health sensor application. Look for my next video to learn about making custom firmware for the HSP. Until then, keep up the innovation.